In the previous video, we had discussed about the Raoult's law and basically the introduction to the vapor pressure of liquid-liquid solutions. In this video, we are going to be talking about the graph that is related to the Raoult's law or which is obtained from the Raoult's law. So, first of all, according to Raoult's law, the vapor pressure, that is the partial vapor pressure of a component is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure component into the mole fraction. So, let's assume we have two a solution containing two components A and B. So PA, that is a partial vapor pressure of A, is equal to PA0, which is the vapor pressure of the pure component, into the mole fraction. Similarly, PB is going to be equal to PB0 XB. Okay, this is what we've learned. Okay, now let's look at this box that I've drawn here. So on the x-axis, you have mole fraction. Okay, and on the y-axis, you have vapor pressure. And it's the same here too. So, this y-axis is also going to be vapor pressure. Okay, now let's look at this equation specifically. Okay, so PA equals to PA naught XA. Right. Now, when the value of xA equals to 1, okay, so the value of xA will be equal to 1, the value of PA becomes equal to value of PA0. This essentially means that our solution just consists of a pure component that is A. Okay, so here you have xA equals to 0 and xA equals to 1. So when xA equals to 0, the vapor pressure of A, so here we will be marking the vapor pressure of A. So the vapor pressure of A will also be 0 and slowly based on the various mole fractions of A, you will come there will come a point when x a equals to 1 and then you'll have a vapor pressure of the pure component. So here this marks the vapor pressure that is P a naught of the pure component. Okay, basically x a is equal to 0. Over there you won't have any vapor pressure associated with that because there is no x a. Now with the variation in mole fraction and then moving on to x a equals to 1, you will have PA0, which is the vapor pressure of the pure component, A. Similarly, we can do the same thing here. We are going, if XA equals to 1, XA will be, XB will be equal to 0. And if XA equals to 0, XB will be equal to 1. So if XB equals to 1, PB will be equal to PB0. So the vapor pressure of the pure component will be equal to the vapor pressure of the substance itself. So here again similar to this case you will have another line and this vapor pressure will be equal to PB naught. Okay so that is what we are first drawing. Okay I hope the way I talked about this graph made sense. First of all we, we had xA equals to 0 and xA equals to 1. So from here we're drawing a point a line from the origin and since the value of the vapor pressure varies linearly with the mole fraction, you get straight lines. So here you have a straight line and then when it meets this side, it's PA0 and PA0 is the vapor pressure of the pure component. Similarly, PB0 equals to the vapor pressure of the pure component. Remember, when XB equals to 1, you will have... Um, you will have the value of... When xb equals to 1, it's a pure, just that particular substance, it's a pure solution, or sorry, it's a pure liquid, pure substance, and then if pa naught, where xa equals to 1, it's a pure substance. So the total vapor pressure, that is p, which is exerted, will be obtained by joining the two points pa and I should have drawn that properly. So this will give us the variation of the total vapor pressure. So here you will have various mole fractions. So this base, this line is actually giving us the cases of like various mole fractions. So 
In this case, over here, when xb equals to 0, the vapor pressure of the solution will be equal to, again, pv naught. And here, x a equals to 1, the vapor pressure, the total vapor pressure will be equal to pa naught. So, um, and then you have, so the total vapor pressure has a minimum value of pa naught and a maximum value of pb naught. This is because we are assuming the value of, so PA naught is less than PB naught, which implies that PA is, or A is, the liquid A is less volatile than B. Now, if you think about it, if you have two solutions, A and two liquids, A and B, and if one of them is water, okay, the other one is, let's say, your uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is made, mean like which is frequently used in sanitizer, so it tends to evaporate pretty quickly, right? So obviously, the water would get converted to the vapor phase to a less extent compared to the isopropyl alcohol, which loves to go out very easily compared to water. So in that case, water will be less volatile than B, uh, water will be less volatile than the other liquid and so the vapor pressure exerted by water will be less than the other one or the iso, whichever is more volatile than water. So with that, we're done with the explanation of the graph. There was a last concept given in your textbook about the composition in vapor phase. So Let's take, you You have the mole fractions of two substances, Y1 and Y2, okay, Y1 and Y2. Now, the vapor pressure, so the partial, according to the Raoult's law, the partial vapor pressure of P1 will be equal to Y1 into P, where P equals to the value of P. Okay, sorry. So let's assume you have two liquid, two the more fractions as Y1 and Y2. According to Dal Dalton's law of partial pressure, partial pressure of a component equals to mole fraction So basically, according to Dalton's law of partial pressure, partial vapor pressure, partial pressure of a component equals to the mole fraction of the component and total pressure in the vapor phase. Let's assume P is equal to the total pressure. So then the partial pressure, that is P1, will be equal to Y1 into P. Similarly, P2 will be equal to Y2 into P. Right, so basically PI component, so the pressure or partial pressure of the component I equals to the mole fraction of I into the total pressure in the vapor phase. Also, you get another relationship between the mole fraction. So Y1 will be equal to P1 by P, Y2 equals to P2 by P. So the mole fraction of a component in vapor phase equals to partial vapor partial pressure vapor pressure divided by of that component divided by total vapor so with that we're officially done with Raoult's law so we need you need to understand this graph because this particular graph is again going to show up when we talk about certain things called as ideal and non-ideal solutions and um, 
over there if you understood this graph it makes it more easier to understand that concept um in the next video we will be discussing the excuse me the relationship of how the Raoult's law is a special case of Henry's law.